This is our last video for Chapter 9 on the Laplace Transform. In this video, we're going to look at the unilateral Laplace Transform. So far in this chapter, we've been using what's called the bilateral or two-sided Laplace Transform. Uh, the reason it's bilateral is its limits of integration go from negative infinity to positive infinity. In other words, it works on both sides of t equals zero for negative time and positive time. So this is the, the uh, Laplace transform that we've been dealing with in this chapter. Technically, it's called the bilateral Laplace transform, or I call it the BLT for short. Now, in this last section, we're going to use a variation of this called the unilateral Laplace transform, or ULT. And the only difference is the unilateral Laplace transform is one-sided. You can see that it integrates time from zero to infinity. So we're just looking at positive values of time. The main use of the ULT is solving linear differential equations with non-zero initial conditions. In other words, systems that are not initially at rest. And the reason it's um, useful for this is we're going to see on the next slide that the differentiation property of this transform includes a term for initial conditions. All right, so here's, let's compare the differentiation properties of the bilateral and unilateral Laplace transform. So here is the, the BLT, the bilateral Laplace transform. So we have um, X of T, and we take the transform, we go to X of S. For the unilateral Laplace transform, we have the exact same thing. X of T becomes X of S. All right, for the first derivative of X, we had DX dt. Remember the uh, differentiation property is we have s times x of s. Now for the ULT, we have the same thing here, x, I'm sorry, s times x of s, but we also have another term, minus the initial condition of x. In other words, x at time zero. So this is gonna be useful if the system is not initially at rest, it has, um, it's going to have some output that's is going to be given to us. So we'll work an example later. All right, um, let's continue here. So the second derivative of x for the bilateral Laplace transform, we have a factor of s squared times x of s. For the ULT, the second derivative of x gives us the same thing, s squared times x of s minus s times x at zero minus x prime at zero. So here there are actually two initial conditions are required if we have a second derivative. We have the initial condition for x, and we also have to have the initial condition for the derivative, the uh, time derivative of x. All right, so here's a, a little table to kind of summarize uh, when we use each of these types of transforms. So if the system is a-causal, then we have to use the BLT. The reason for this, again, is the BLT works with negative times as well as positive times. The ULT does not allow us to do that. So for A-causal systems, we use BLT. If the system is causal and it's initially at rest, well, then we can either use the BLT or the ULT. We can use either one because we see if the system is at rest, these extra terms here uh, go to zero and the ULT is exactly equal to the BLT. Now, where we're going to mainly use the ULT here are causal systems with non-zero initial conditions. And in that case, the ULT is the only one that will work. So let's look at an example. So let's say we're given um, a system that is described by this differential equation. dy dt plus 2y equals x, where x, the input to the system, is equal to e to the 4t times u of t. And we're also told that the system is causal. Um, the other information that we're given is that the system is not initially at rest. It has an initial condition. The output of the system, y, at time zero is equal to one. All right, so we'll, we'll start with by taking the ULT of this differential equation. So we have the first derivative of y that gives us sy, but remember now, for the ULT, we have minus the initial condition, minus y naught. And by the way, that is going to be equal to 1. So we'll put that in on the next step. 
Um, the second term, 2y, just becomes 2 times the transform of y. And then on the right side, x, we're going to take the transform of x, which is given by this uh, function here. And so if we remember from our transform pairs, um, a, decay, a uh, exponential function has a transform of 1 over s plus a, and in this case, a is negative 4. Remember, there was a minus sign in front of the a. So uh, we have 1 over s minus 4. All right, um, what we can do next is um, solve for y. So um, let's put all the y's on the left side. And this 1, we're going to move over, which that was the initial condition here. Why not? Uh, we're going to move that over to the right side. So now I've got sy plus 2y. So that becomes s plus 2 times y equals 1 over s minus 4 plus 1. Um, let's combine all of this, these both of these terms, um, together. So we can say uh, 1 over s minus 4 plus s minus 4 over s minus 4. I'm just using the least common denominator here. And um, adding these uh, two numerators together, I have s minus 4 plus 1, which is equal to s minus 3. So on the right side, I have s minus 3 over s minus 4. Over on the left side, I had y times s plus 2. So let's divide by s plus 2 to solve for y. So here is our Laplace transform for the solution to this differential equation. It's s plus 3 over s plus 2 times s minus 4. Now, our, our last step is to do the inverse Laplace transform here to go back to y of t. So we can do partial fraction expansion. We can break this thing up into two terms, a over s plus 2 plus b over s minus 4. Um, using the methods for partial fractions, we find that a is equal to 5 over 6 and b is equal to 1 over 6. So here is our um, decomposed version of the Laplace transform for y. Our last step is we can do uh, the inverse Laplace transform by inspection using the Laplace transform pair for exponential functions, which we've been using over and over. So this first term, we see that a is 2. So we have e to the minus 2t and times 5 sixths out in front. The second term, we see that a is negative 4. So that becomes e to the 4t. And we have 1 6 in front. And all of that is multiplied by the step function. So there is our solution to the differential equation.